Okay. So talk about uh, lighting ratios, and it doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, a lot of this stuff becomes muscle memory, very simplex. So <laughs> someone else pointed me today to a video, the person that makes uh, instructional videos on photography, and he's t he's talking about the uh, incidence meter in his camera, taking care of exposure. Yeah, your camera doesn't have an incident meter. It has a reflectance meter in it. This is an incident meter up here. This is a reflectance meter right here. Um, let's get into lighting ratios. I have a studio strobe over there uh, sitting on the ground uh, hooked to my Cyber Commander, which I use for my strobes. Right now I'm 8 watt seconds of power output. I don't know, about 12 feet away. What is it that you want to control? And you don't have to think about ratios. It can strictly be percentages. I mean, you don't actually have to calculate out ratios. I mean, photography is about capturing the moment. It's about getting the composition. It's about taking what is in your brain and translating it into the camera. It's not about sitting there, as some YouTube photographers are sitting there with charts and graphs and making references to a BS mark. And, you know, you know that's neither the joy nor is it the essence of photography. It's undoubtedly true that uh, photography is kind of 40% science and gear, and the rest of it is creativity. Being able to imagine what it is that you think you can do, or you're certain that you could do, and uh, translating that into the camera. You know, uh, I heard a comment once by another YouTube photographer, actually someone that actually has brains, and uh, he said that he swore that... Uh, the smarter the cameras got, uh, the dumber the photographer got, and he's absolutely correct on that. Uh, I might be the epitome of a, a lazy a couch potato. Well, I'm not. I sit behind the computer too damn much, but I'm not lazy. Well, maybe I am lazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not lazy when it comes to photography. Ratios. What sort of ratio is it that you want to place relative to your ambient? Let's say you're, you've got a beautiful composition, as I mentioned before of a, uh, someone in a, uh, in a stairwell, and you have this horrible, horrible um, ambient light, and it's nasty green fluorescent. Now, you can obviously dial that out in Lightroom, and certainly you can take a, uh, a, an exposure and uh, use that as a white balance reference. You can have someone hold. There's a million ways to skin a cat. There's the fast, easy way, and there's the slow, methodical, calculating way. It depends on what you want to do. You can have someone hold up a really easy way. If you're going to do a bunch of shots, is having hold, someone hold up a color checker passport or a gray card and uh, something to white balance um, in Lightroom and then you can apply that to all your photographs. That's certainly easy. What if you want to drown out that sort of lighting because it does cause other issues even if, not if, but even when you white balance and it causes issues uh, uh, with color saturation and the spectrum of the shot. So even though you're able to correctly white balance it still causes issues with the spectrum of light that's brought. Even though you've correctly white balanced something, what people don't realize is while that corrects out most all of it and you'll have a correct white balance, you'll still have an issue with the spectrum of the light that's actually been captured once you've white balanced. I mean, if you don't believe that, uh, take a test shot for yourself and see. If I want to actually drown out that light, what sort of incident light, uh, what sort of ambient uh, incident light do I want to drown out or what do I want to keep? If it's nice evening morning glow light and uh, I want to keep part of that, I'm going to either have to drop down my power and what, well, I want to keep a, a aperture. This is also another reason why, uh, unlike a, a speed light, which you can dial down to 1 64th power, which is not low enough, it's important to actually have a strobe that you can dial way down. Like now I'm at uh, 2.5 watt seconds of power. so. And I'm going to take it up to, uh, it needs to stay within your sync range too, 200th of a second, f3.2, perfectly fine, adjust my ASO, or I'm going to adjust the actual distance from my studio strobe to my subject to actually change, uh, you know, uh, the light fall off, uh, inverse square of the distance, of course you hope you know about light fall off, 90% though. Right now I'm dominating at 90% at f2.8, so now I've got the correct aperture that I want and I've drowned out that bad lighting if that's what I want to do and I can also increase the power and uh, raise my shutter speed. This is also another great reason for high speed sync is that if I totally want to drown out all my ambient uh, illumination if it sucks 
and strictly work off of a speed light or studio strobe, then that's a wonderful option. A lot of studio strobes, especially like this one with IGBT control, I do not have the option for high speed sync. Or I'm right now I'm already down at ISO 200, so I can certainly adjust my ISO, but what percentage, we don't have to talk about ratios, we can strictly talk about percentage, what percentage of the ambient versus the fill light do you want to keep, and how is that going to factor into how it is that your specular, your uh, highlights on the portraiture or the midtones, the diffuse versus the shadow is going to play out in the composition, you have to be able to see what it is in your mind that you want, immediately dial it in and not be able to, th not have to think about, it, about the gear. That's another reason why one of these is so important. You can sit there and chimp on the back of your camera and you'll look like a douche doing it, especially in a, you know, in a portrait, uh, in a portrait shoot or a corporate shoot, and even so in, uh, in, a, in a wedding shot, and you obviously not going to go up to the, uh, up to the bride and groom while they're taking their vows and take a light meter reading, but I'm talking about uh, in those select photographs uh, after uh, the ceremonies or before when you actually have a couple seconds to actually pop off a, a reading and make a very quick decision based upon your skills what it is you want to do relative to the ambient lighting that you have, whether it sucks and you don't want to use it at all or whether it's awesome and you want to dial or feather down your uh, your speed light or your uh, studio strobe illumination so that you get the uh, proper percentage of uh, ambient to uh, to a uh, flash illumination. Now the other thing that I made the premise of this video on, and that's why I actually like seeing bad videos by other YouTubers because it's inspirational and it gives me a premise that is like, oh well, you know, someone's doing that. That's just totally wrong. And other people are following it, and it gives me it spurns. I don't actually, you know, don't hate those videos at all. I actually like that. And it's the same thing I used to do in a philosophy is that you'd find things are just totally inaccurate and wrong and you use that as a springboard by uh, using that as a basis by which to talk about the correct way to doing something. We need to talk about um, what uh, two different types of light and people don't understand this. You have ambient light which is a flow and you have light like this which is like a shotgun blast. Now, it is the case, now we're not talking about TTL photography here, we're talking about uh, dumb, either auto or manual, like studio strobes, manual uh, flash control, that no matter what you set your shutter speed at, the light is getting through. You know, it doesn't matter how fast or how slow you swing those gates on the shutter, the, shutter, the studio strobe light, the speed light in manual mode is going to be getting through. Now, if you're going to be using your... Uh, there's not a whole lot of options. There are far, far more options now than there were before for having TTL off-camera, non-corded uh, uh, flash photography. But this turns photographers into dummies. They completely rely on the uh, the, the, the sensor on the front of the speed light uh, to quench it, and they don't realize how to actually control their light. They sit there in the back, and they play roulette. They gamble off the back of their camera until they dial into what they think is good. And then they work off that as a basis. I mean, how about, this is not a device for slowing you down. It's a device to make things, okay, right now I'm out of 2.2. I'm 90%, uh, I'm 10% of ambient, 90% of, uh, of uh, my strobe illumination. Right now I've got a, uh, a maximum sync speed of 250 of a second. What if, for example, since we know that flash exposure is linked to aperture gain and not the shutter speed because... This studio strobe, no matter I got the shutter speed at a 30th of a second or 250th of a second, it's going to slip right on through. We're talking about a gun blast of light versus ambient light where it's pouring in over time. What people don't realize is that the ambient exposure is linked, obviously, both to shutter speed and your aperture. And exposure is gain and time. But we have to talk about two different types of light and understand what the hell these two different lights are doing and what controls what. Our aperture is actually constricting the flow of this illumination. My shutter speed, both aperture and my shutter, are constricting the flow of ambient light. So, say for example, I'm uh, outside and I uh, want to. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm right now at 90% of flash. I'm going to take it down from 250 of a second down to 30th of a second. And what are we going to have? 
Okay, now I'm at 50%. So I have a bunch of ambient light streaming in. All I've done is I've kept my flash power the same, my ISO the same. I've dropped my shutter speed. I have the exact same amount of light, essentially, pouring into my camera. I'm going to have to actually adjust my ISO a little bit. I'm going to adjust it up to 400 instead of 200. 30th of a second, 5.6. Okay. How do I adjust my shutter speed if I'm using Studio Strobe or, or a speed light illumination to get the correct exposure? And what do I want to do relative to the ambient light? Do I want to destroy it? Do I want to dominate it? Or do I want, now like I said, this is the important reason why people think, well, how powerful is a studio strobe? Does it have 600 watts? It's like, that's all well and fine, you know. I'm all for having a really powerful studio strobe. It helps in a lot of things. But one of the things that is really important is a studio strobe being dialed way the hell down, like to 2 watt seconds, or in this case, 2.5 watt seconds on the Einstein. Otherwise, I'm going to have to move the thing way the hell back, or I'm going to have to drop on an ND filter under my camera, and to hell with that. I don't want to drop an ND filter under my camera. I'm going to sit here and dial down the watt seconds. Okay, right now I'm at 2.5 watt seconds. Okay. Okay, let's go down to ISO 100, 30th of a second. Now it should be right around 2.8, and I am. 30th of a second, F2.8, ISO 100. Now I'm perfect, and... I'm using 50% of ambient and 50% of my filth. This is exactly what I want. I have, for example, the morning or uh, evening sun pouring in. I don't want to dominate the shot, but I still need sufficient fill to define the specular, the diffuse, and the midtones on the person's face. Okay, so I've set my ISO at 100, 1 th 1 30th of a second. So what people don't realize is that the ambient light dictates camera shake. You know, a fast shutter speed, if it's 80% or more over ambient, you can sit there and take a, a flash shot at one second exposure, and one, one second exposure, and you're not going to really have any blur. Um, the 20% of that, no, no, it depends on what you're, you're shooting, what sort of effect you're going for. Your flash is going to be ultimately your shutter speed because your flash is occurring at the speed of light and the duration is going to be different from speed light to studio strobe and from strobe to strobe, but essentially, you've captured it. Even down at a third of a second, you can actually talk to any professional photographer out there and say, look, if I'm shooting in basically total darkness, as long as I can get autofocus acquisition, I got no issues with shooting at a third of a second or half of a second worrying about camera shake because my shutter speed has essentially become the speed of light of the duration of my studio strobe or my speed light. So right now I'm perfect. I'm at 50% ambient and 50% flash, 30th of a second, f2.8, which is exactly what I want, say for morning or evening portraiture shot. You have to be able to know what controls what. And, you know, when I saw a video last night where someone couldn't get the exposure right, and he was, this person was using a studio strobe, and he was adjusting his shutter speed, I was thinking to myself, you, you know with that studio strobe, adjusting your shutter speed is not going to change, you know, a stop or two one way or the other, or even three, is going to change anything regarding the exposure. And people do that. Yeah. Your shutter speed is going to control your ambient light. When you got a manual flash burst or strobe burst, you're constricting that light with your aperture. This is why light meters, for example, uh, will tell you what aperture it is that you need to set when you're in flash mode, cordless or even corded, where I can actually go to ambient, and of course I have a shutter priority options where I can actually set my shutter, and I have aperture priority options where I can set my aperture. But when I'm in uh, wireless uh, flash mode, either corded or non-corded, standard, channel 1, it's going to tell me what my aperture needs to be be up at a 30th of a second, 40th of a second, 2.8, close enough, 2.5, essentially there's no 2.5 on my, on my lens, so it's going to be f2.8, whatever little minor adjustments, a third of a stop, I can adjust that in Lightroom. But I know my ratio is at 70%. Wonderful. 60% now. So, understand, while exposure is gain in time, you got two different types of light. You got a light that flows where your shutter speed is drastically affecting the light, and you have another type of light that's like a shotgun or a gun blast. And no matter what your shutter speed is, essentially, the light is going to be getting through. And this is where you need to constrict it with your aperture. And if it's not enough, 
due to whatever output that you have, you're either going to have to change your ISO or you're going to have to move the studio strobe or speed light in or out to actually get the correct aperture as to your desired specification for the composition that you want. I hope I kind of made this clear. Um, talking about lighting ratios uh, makes people's eyes glaze over. The easiest way to talk about it is percentage, how much percentage of your ambient versus your fill flash or your studio strobe that you're using, and the knowledge that you've got two different types of light, and uh, your shutter is not going to be controlling that uh, off-camera speed light, non-TTL or studio strobe, uh, as far as uh, how much light is getting through the doors, because whether it's 30th of a second or 1 1,000th of a second, the light is getting through. So Whether you chimp on your camera or use a light meter, you'll be able to see that. So I hope I made that clear. Thanks a bunch.